Hey everybody, my name is Joe Piperunas. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanalyze. We're a boutique media and research firm that covers disruptive tech investing for a broad audience of retail and institutional investors across the globe. Today's presentation is going to be on long read sequencing stocks. And we're gonna follow up on some companies that we've looked at in the past. Now, before we get into that, I wanted to touch on the difference between long read sequencing versus short read sequencing. And there's a good primer put together by the University of Cambridge that explains it very simply. So short read sequencing is what firms like Illumina are currently using. So they'll take small fragments of DNA and read them at lengths of 50 to 300 base pairs. So that's just simply a, a, a measurement that we can use to compare how long the reads are between different methods. What they'll do then is they'll assemble all those short reads into an entire genome sequence using bioinformatics pipelines and reference genomes. Another way to do this would be long read sequencing, and that's where you take a single molecule of DNA and produce reads of 10,000 to 30,000 base pairs in length. Now there's a number of advantages to doing long read sequencing, and we're not going to elaborate on the use cases of each, but long read sequencing would be seen as the VHS of sequencing in the future, while short read sequencing might be seen as the Betamax. Now, there's certainly room for both methods, but the bull thesis is that long read sequencing will allow firms to do a lot more than what they can do today. There are two companies right now, both publicly traded stocks, that are what the University of Cambridge describes as the two dominant producers of true long read sequencing technologies. These firms are Pacific Biosciences, which Illumina actually tried to acquire, and Oxford Nanopore Technologies. So let's talk about Oxford Nanopore. We published a piece last year on them, and I'll put that in the description of this video. We took a look at their year-end results to see what additional information we could glean. And the concern we had before was that their COVID revenues were taking up a significant chunk of overall revenues. Well, that's changed now. You can see here in 2021, COVID testing revenues have fallen dramatically. However, there's a new entrant here, and that's the Emirati Genome Program. So that's a client, the UAE, United Arab Emirates, a client that Oxford Nanopore is working closely with, along with uh, BGI, the Chinese Illumina, if you will. And they're working on sequencing the genomes of the entire 1 million people that live in the UAE. Now, the problem we have with that is the usual customer concentration risk. So if 22% of 2021 revs is pretty high, Oxford Nanopore has raised their guidance for life science research tools revenues going forward in 2022 and 2023, but they don't provide us with any color on how much of that is coming from that single customer. Now, when we look at this slide, which was in their year-end presentation, it shows how the Emirati revenues occupy a great chunk of their total revenues. And you can see here also that the average revenue per account for large accounts, and they've mixed USD with GBP here, which is kind of annoying, but you get the picture that the average revenue per account over the years, lower right-hand side is decreasing. And we're not sure why that is, but it's something to note. Now, on the topic of the Emirati sequencing project, it's one of the largest of its type in the world. The idea is to get all 1 million people to have their genome sequenced and it certainly raises some ethical concerns this is a country where adultery is punishable by stoning and you're going to have everybody put in their full genome and then you'll easily be able to see certain family members may not have the father that they think they do it's quite an interesting story and this goes back to when people were giving out DNA tests to family members as gifts. And wow, there were some real surprises there. So that was just a side note that um, came up when we were researching this. And it just goes to show that you really need to think these sorts of things through. Now, getting back to the 
stocks at hand. So we talked about Oxford Nanopore, the other name on the list, Pacific Biosciences. This was a firm that we covered. If you can see that red arrow, that's about the time we wrote about them last. And the name of our article was, why is Pacific Biosciences stock falling? Well, it wasn't falling at the time, but we used that title because we assumed it would be falling very shortly and fall it did. Since we published that article, it's down around 80%. If you look at the revenues, they're on the increase. So the action here is quite interesting. You have a stock price that has absolutely plummeted, but at the same time, in that same duration of time, this firm has done very well, finally getting the revenue growth that we've been waiting for. And ARC had said back in 2020 that they believed it was going to be a breakout year for Pacific Biosciences, and it has been. So. What we're probably gonna do here is come back around and take a closer look at this firm because the last time we looked at them, we just dismissed them based on the fact that the valuations were just simply outrageous. Now, the third factor we need to consider here is that, sure, we have those two stocks we just talked about that are doing true long read sequencing, but some big news from Illumina in January, and that was at the JP Morgan Healthcare Conference when they announced they have a synthetic long read approach called infinity and this will enable uh, 10 times greater throughput with 90 percent less dna they say than legacy long reads so they're kind of taking the piss out of everybody else with that statement it can be fully automated and here's the clincher it can be rapidly applied across the 20,000 instruments they have installed around the globe with 8,000 customers so anybody who is anybody Ha is purchasing equipment from Illumina in the life sciences space, and Illumina has their hand in everyone's pocketbook. So it becomes very easy for them to start offering and selling a long read solution. Now, in the research piece that accompanies this video, we've provided a lot more detail around what others have said about this technology. Long story short, it remains to be seen how effective it will be. Our thought is that if it can apply to a majority of use cases, then that's fine. Let Pacific Biosciences and Oxford Nanopore go after the niches. And there's an article that we reference in our research piece that talks about how the Pacific Biosciences CEO said that this news from Illumina meant nothing because their, their methods are entirely different from what Illumina is doing. And he also said, interestingly, that he doesn't believe they're competing directly with Oxford Nanopore because both firms are targeting different client bases. So we're particularly interested in that news from Illumina. It was an article by Evaluate, we also referenced, which provides this nice little table, which looks at the three players, Illumina, Oxford, and Pacific Biosciences, the types of tech they have, the lengths of read and whatnot. So it's probably early days before we can start, I guess, coming to any conclusion about how good the Illumina announcement is for shareholders. But if we look at the company right now, this is our simple valuation ratio. It, take, it takes market cap, divides that by annualized revenues. That's simply last quarter times four. And we get a simple valuation ratio. We can use this to do relative comparisons as we've done here. So you can see we've taken the ratio for Illumina, compared that to Pacific Biosciences and Oxford Nanopore. As you can see, Oxford Nanopore is still very richly priced. We had to use uh, 2021 life science research tools revenues since they don't break things down quarterly because they're a UK firm, which means the next update we'll get will be halfway through 2022. Now, when we look at the size of all these companies, we need to keep that in mind. Illumina is the dominant player here. And we were quite concerned before that Illumina, after failing to acquire Pacific Biosciences, didn't seem to have any sort of answer to long read sequencing. And we said we hoped they had a plan B. Well, that appears to be possibly the acquisition of an Australian firm. And again, you can read about that in the detailed research piece that we'll link to in the description of this video. But the point here is that Illumina is the 500 pound gorilla and they have this under control. They have the resources, the wherewithal, the knowledge to make sure they're not gonna be left behind. And this should have these other companies certainly paying very close attention as they are. 
Lastly, we wanted to touch on a firm called BioNanogenomics. This came up in our Pacific Biosciences piece. It's another smaller firm, some $700 million market cap. Their shares went to the moon when an ARC analyst on Twitter said that he would like to speak with their CEO. We had noted that, and today the shares are down somewhat around 70% from that time. However, the company is also bringing in some revenues now and seems to have some consistent growth. However, it's notable that they're not mentioned when you're looking across all these expert opinions about long read sequencing. We don't know why that is. That's probably a story for another time. So we just wanted to, to mention that um, bio nanogenomics was also in consideration when we researched this piece. To conclude, long read sequencing certainly seems to be the next big step for the genomics community. There are two true long read players, Oxford Nanopore, Pacific Biosciences, and now we have Illumina with their newly debuted synthetic approach. So we'll probably need to wait and see how the technology is received. Early access is going to be next quarter, so the second half of 2022, or Q2, I believe. We'd have to look and see in their press release, which we've linked to in our research piece. Uh, we will assume that Illumina eventually comes out ahead. That's why we invest in market leaders. But at the same time, we're also going to be very aware of what other companies are doing. We do have some dogs in the race here in our own portfolio, but that's going to be for premium subscribers only. So please make sure you subscribe to our channel. Put your questions and comments uh, on the video. We'll answer them there. And thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video today.